Hi. In this very difficult time where energy prices are going up every day, imagine that, for example, you are managing an energy company and the energy company has a very big power station that generates electricity. Then the electricity gets transmitted to different distribution lines. And from there, the electricity will be transmitted to individual homes. Or on the other hand, you are managing a very big retail company. And that retail company manages many retail shops, ranging from mini supermarkets to mega markets. In these two applications, we can clearly see that we have a hierarchical structure with top level and bottom level. Hierarchical structure exists in many business sectors, such as, for example, in healthcare, in transportation, and in communication. In these two applications, we might be faced with very domain-specific questions, like, for example, what is the power consumption in the next months, or how will the sales look like during the next six months? On the other hand, we might be faced with very generic questions, like how can we formulate our strategic plan for the next year? So to answer these questions, we need to do forecasting. My name is Mohammed, and in the next few slides, I'm going to walk you through a model that I have developed with faculty R&D during my fellowship about improving hierarchical forecasting. Within hierarchical data, normally forecasting exists at multiple levels of the hierarchy. The first level is operational level, in which we care about doing forecasting at the bottom level of the hierarchy. And normally within operational forecasting, we care about doing forecasting at the near future. Or there is a static forecasting in which we care about doing forecasting at the top level of the hierarchy. And normally within a strategic forecasting, we care about doing forecasting for the long-term future. Another important concept within hierarchical forecasting is coherence. So if we have our hierarchical structure data, as we can see here, each department will be independently doing its own forecasting. So here, the mini supermarket will be doing its own forecasting for the sales for the future while also at the same time, the company headquarters, based on the information and the data that it has, can also be doing its own forecasting for the future. But what's really very important is that we would like always to make sure that the sum of the forecasting at the bottom level is exactly equal to the forecasting at the top level. So in this example, we would like to make sure that the forecasting, the sum of the forecasting that is coming from the mini supermarket, supermarket, and the mega markets will always be equal to the forecasting at the company headquarters. Because if that is not the case, then we will have a misalignment. And this misalignment will be causing business losses. So coherence is really very important within hierarchical forecast. So with that in mind, our objectives are, one, to perform forecasting at multiple levels, time horizons. But also while we are doing that, we would like also to make sure we are doing it in a coherent manner. So. Imagine now we have a slightly more complicated structure in which we have a company headquarter, but now that company headquarter has multiple regional headquarters. And we have different states, and within each state, we can have either mini supermarket, supermarket, or a mega market. Now, if you look at this hierarchical structure, we can clearly see that it's actually a graph. And so it makes more sense to model it as a graph. And by doing so, we can actually work with graph neural network because now it's more suited for this kind of application. By working with the graph neural network, we are actually entering into geometric deep learning domain. To summarize what's really a very complicated topic, geometric deep learning is all about generalizing neural network models to work in irregular shape domains. That means, for example, working with molecules, with graphs, with networks, and even with more complicated meshes. So what are the advantages of doing so? The first advantage is that we are preserving the data structure. We have a graph, so it makes more sense to model it as a graph. And by doing so, we are preserving its structure. And since we have a, a graph data, we can use graph neural network. The second advantage is that by doing so, we are taking the advantage of the dependency relation between different levels. Here in this application, we know that the company headquarter cares more about the information that is coming from the regional headquarter more than the information that is coming, for example, from the mini supermarket. Also, by doing so, we have more freedom into imposing dependency between different nodes at different branches. For example, if we discover that the mega supermarket at state C is directly dependent on the mini supermarket at state B, 
we can model that dependency easily since we are working with graph structure. And in fact, this is not an artifact scenario. It might be a very realistic scenario. It might be the case that the mega supermarket at state C is geographically more close to the mini supermarket at state B. So how will our final model looks like? So our final model is a graph-based neural network for time series forecasting. We have trained our model using the Australian domestic tourism data, and we have done our evaluation by predicting future tourism demand. So our model have shown that it has an improved forecasting performance by 8%, and also it has a coherence performance improvement by 45%. As a summary, we have proved that graph neural network can be shown as an alternative way for doing time series forecasting. And we have also shown that graph neural network provides an improved coherency, which then allows different business sectors to make decisions more effectively and accurately. And finally, the model allows us to do and to model dependencies between different nodes. Thank you for listening.